All right, welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk my top three favorite episodes of The Walking Dead Season 7. Now, I'm running a little bit late today. Yesterday's video, I said I would have this up by midnight, and I'm still going to try to keep that schedule for the next two days at least. Tomorrow at midnight, I'm going to try to post my top three worst episodes of The Walking Dead TV show, Season 7. And then uh, on Wednesday, we will talk about the entire season. And I think it's going to be a good discussion. So if you guys want to put your thoughts and opinions down below, I think that'll be great. I can scroll through some of your thoughts and opinions, and then maybe I can add some fan feedback to that video. And the reason why I'm really interested this season is because I knew my favorite episode this season. And I knew roughly which was going to be my second favorite, but picking out a third was difficult. There was two or three that I really liked, and I knew it. I definitely knew these two and three I really enjoyed. But there was no episode that just jumped out at me. Out of 16, you know what I mean? I, I enjoyed the, the acting a lot. I love the characters. I love the actors. For the most part, I'm loving so much of it. But this season was definitely the most problematic, I feel, as far as my enjoyment to the episodes. And it's so weird and messed up because there's so much I'm like I like I like I like I like and then when you look at them it's just like oh and it has to do with the structure I know that's going to be the biggest thing why are we talking about structure it's important because that plays into the biggest reason why I just wasn't sucked in a lot with certain episodes but again we will discuss that in the full uh, season 7 review and it won't be uh, let's shit talk the walking dead because I still primarily enjoy it. I'm 90% loving what's going on. There's only that little bit that is gnawing at me. So let's dive in with my number three pick, which is going to be service. I know this episode is where the bad guys are winning and they're ruling over the group, you know? This is dark, depressing, and it is disturbing at some points. And I know, I get it. This is probably an episode that's not going to be on a lot of fans' lists, uh, especially for favorites, but it's on mine. It's got source material that was brought to the screen properly it was remixed well it was still refreshing and interesting the characters even though it was dark they have the comedic moments with father gabriel they have moments that touch back to older episodes like with the camcorder and negan saying i would not mess with that guy you know having rick with his beard there's just so much that works for this episode i enjoyed it a lot it's just magnetic when i go back and want to want to skim through this episode to see if this is going to be on my top list, I find myself wanting to watch the entire episode. And I think that is the main reason what made me put it on the list is because it's magnetic. You have the charm. Jeffrey Dean Morgan's very charismatic, and he's very charismatic as Negan. One of my favorite moments is when he's talking about wanting to take Maggie back with him, and then you hear that gunshot. That look he gives, oh man, I mean, loved it. I, I think that look really... Um, um, projects why I love it. You have so much going on in that moment. You have the uh, the comedy side to it because he's joking around. Just guys, just a bunch of guys chit-chatting, shooting the shit. But that's not what's happening, you know what I mean? And then you hear that gunshot and his demeanor, it all changes. And it's like this dark cloud looms over and then he walks towards the screen. Plus, there's so many little moments like Daryl just looking at him when they first show up. Get your tissues. <laughs> it's just horrible. I love number three, definitely of love number three which is service which is episode four i'm sorry so let's go to my number two pick which is going to be the season finale and i don't know if this is going to be on a lot of fan lists it might be but for me I think it wasn't necessarily the strongest episode that we've ever gotten in the series, but as a whole, again, when I'm looking back at the, the uh, season, I'm finding a lot of moments I like, but when it comes to the full episode, I think I find myself enjoying this a lot more, and it has to do with the reward in this episode, even though we get a betrayal and we get Negan who's dominating for the majority of it, even before Rick realizes it, you know, because as they're setting up, Negan Negan has it played out already. Negan technically is winning already. And if it wasn't for the other people showing up, man, Rick would have been up, you know, shit creek without a paddle. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the paddle would have been up his ass <laughs> and Negan would have put it there. So, but we get that reward and that reward isn't just rewarding for the one episode. It's rewarding for the entire season. Plus, it's kicking off the next season. And that reward is the good guys finally pushing Negan back. And I did miss the dog yipped 
during that episode, and I missed something that Negan said that perfectly fits right now. It's a reward for us fans, and Negan perfectly said it. He yelled to Simon and said, you taste that, Simon? That's eating shit or something like that. That is when he uh, saw that Maggie was still alive. That's that line that I didn't hear. I didn't quite catch. Not only that, we have the tiger. We have a lot of back and forth between Negan. We have the epic Sasha moment, which is a wonderful remix. And I'll be honest, they got me with that remix. I knew the Sasha moment was coming. But I still thought they were going to do a comic book uh, version where Negan kills her. I honestly thought that. Uh, right up until they were loading up and I'm thinking, you know, they're going to go with the damn pills. You know, well, that was always on our mind, obviously, because screenwriting 101, if you show a gun on the table, you got to use it. They show the pills, they got to use it, you know. So I think I was just in denial. But yeah, they they did something fantastic with Sasha. They did something fantastic paying an homage, um, paying honor to Glenn and Abraham. Uh, c making this a conclusion. It's jump-starting a war, but it's also a conclusion to a part of the story. And I just loved it. I enjoy the shit out of this episode, and that's why it's number two. Definitely. I have a feeling I'm missing something, but we're going to dive in deep with uh, a full season review. And I'm, I do want to discuss this episode, the season finale, because there's a lot of points I think a lot of people missed, like the little statue that said, I didn't know. And I personally saw that as Dwight saying he didn't know about Sasha or he didn't know about the trash people. I think it's the trash people. Yeah, because they knew Dwight didn't know because Dwight was on his way when Rosita and Sasha, you know what I mean? You follow me. So I think he said, I didn't know about the trash people. And then you have uh, Daryl. I see a lot of people confused. Why didn't they give chase? They jammed an umbrella into the gate mechanism. If you go back and rewatch it, you'll see it. But there's a lot of moments. In the very beginning, we watch, watch Sasha die. That's a tongue twister. Go back and watch the episode. In the very beginning, they show us Sasha die. It's clear as day when you rewatch it. Uh, she's dying. And then when you go back and rewatch the episode, you see a lot of things that call back to the first episode where they they hide a lot of hidden meaning and this is an episode I definitely want to do a hidden meaning video I don't know if I have the time but I'm gonna to try to make the time now let's kick it over to my all-time favorite episode of season seven and a lot of you probably already know what that's gonna be episode number one the season premiere and I know for a number of you I know you're like, wait a minute, what? Why? Two of our you know, most beloved characters died. And I've said this a number of times, uh, good life, good death. When you're, when you're watching these fictional characters, it's not just about uh, you know, watching and enjoying them being alive, especially in The Walking Dead. Maybe not with other shows, but especially in The Walking Dead. If they get a death that's iconic, that's legendary, that's unforgettable, they don't, don't all have to be epic. And I, I, I shouldn't have said it like that because I don't mean like, a big spectacle. I don't mean that at all. If it fits the character, if it fits the story, if it pushes things forward, if it touches you emotionally, I still will agree with you guys. Ah, we should have had Abraham die in All Out War, but I think that's just my bias for wanting the character there. I understand story-wise why Abraham had to go and what they were doing as far as writing and mapping this story out. Now we can look back at the season and we see where their heads were, where they were mapping the story out as far as uh, Abraham being the one, and it's not like the comic book where it's it's just randomly picked. Negan did this any mini miny mo thing, but he s seemingly sized up somebody that is going to be a problem in the future. You know, somebody he might not be able to break, somebody that could back Rick up as a number two to go to war or to not fall in line. So he took him out. And then Daryl did his thing, and then it was Glenn's turn. Now, with episode number one, the reason why it's my all-time favorite, let's get into some of this, though. It is beautifully done. Every moment I just find fantastic. A lot of the other episodes this season have moments that I love, but there's other moments that I'm like, I just don't feel it in this episode, you know? We get, a, like I said, uh, you get a whole lot of one thing, and then you want a little bit of something else. With episode one, I love every little moment. The music, the acting, the characters, the uh, charisma. I want to make sure I don't repeat myself all over again because I did do a Hidden Meanings video on episode one. So if you want more in-depth detail of some of my discussion, you could check out that video. But there's just so much with episode number one that I love. As a comic book fan, loving the source material, they brought just enough 
to the screen and a lot of the stuff they brought to the screen they did it in a way where it was like watching the comic book that story we've loved for years now we watch it play out just in all its disgusting and gross uh, gory glory <laughs> gory glory it was just awesome as a comic fan and then as a tv show fan seeing how they remixed that and they did kind of paint themselves into a corner having that cliffhanger but i personally feel they did almost a perfect job dealing with that situation and writing themselves out of that box with the premiere episode we have some emotional shit we have heartbreaking shit we have stuff in this episode jam-packed in this episode that is why we watch TV because it reaches inside and it moves us emotionally. These fictional characters, this fake world, and we're on the edge of our seats, you know, bawling. <laughs> you know, we're in the moment. A family member just died. That's how it feels. Uh, this episode has so much. It has the music. It has the foreshadowing. It has the callbacks. It has the symbolism. The way this episode was written was fantastic, and I personally think that the season premiere of season seven was probably one of the best episodes in the entire series definitely in the top 10 absolutely without a shadow of a doubt that's how i personally feel so that's my top three picks uh, again, uh, we will go in a in-depth discussion on the whole season. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions, but if you want to know some runners up, and I will go into this in more detail, Sing Me a Song, very enjoyable. I rewatched that a number of times already, like three or four times. Uh, episode 8, Hearts Still Beating. I love the charisma just oozing out of this episode. There's so much I like in that one. And then Bury Me Here. I like this. I like this a lot. Listen, in season six, we had the Here's Not Here. I think it was season six, right? The Morgan episode. Lenny James, he brings it. You know what I mean? That Every single time he's on screen... I am glued to the screen. I absolutely love his character and his performance. Uh, even though I disagree with him, and I've disagreed with his character in the past, uh, I love it. Just love it. Bury Me Here, I found that to be a sleeper hit for me personally because when I start watching that, even if I go back to you know check in on it to see if this is an episode that I really like or maybe it's on the bottom of the list, I can't help but watch the entire episode. I think the actor playing Richard also did a fantastic job. Not just Richard. Richard too, but Gavin, the actor playing Gavin, I think there's just so much going on here that is fantastic. Anyway, those are some runners-up, my top three picks, and I would love to hear what you guys have to pick for your top three favorite episodes for The Walking Dead in Season 7. Alright guys, thanks for making it this far into the video. I really appreciate the patience in me getting this video up. I know it's going to be late because I can already tell. I, I can see the time. I should have. I should be posting it right now. <laughs> it's midnight right now. So let me get this up real quick to you guys. Thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.